Oh hi, I'm the heretic. So there's a lot of questions in regards to borders and what libertarians should or should not support. How should borders be handled ethically? What policy should the state employ in a manner that is both ethical and beneficial to the eventual creation of a voluntary society, or at least a more voluntary society? We can break this down into two categories. What would the most ethical forms of borders look like? And if we must have a state, what attitude should the state have towards its own borders? In other words, should Trump build a wall? With this in mind, we can look at this from two perspectives. Should we have open borders and let anyone come in for whatever reason they wish? Or should we close the borders and be selective about who comes in, how many of them, or even if they should come in at all? So just to be clear, I want to define my terms. Borders, referring to the boundaries that designate a given region of land, usually the boundaries of nations or privately owned land. Also, when I say closed borders, this doesn't mean that nobody is allowed into the nation ever. Simply, that the nation has certain rules, including quotas of immigrants and procedures for who can get in and why. Though if a nation did want to close its borders completely, that is closed borders too. A nation, in this case, will refer to the geographic area defined by its borders as represented on maps. A nation may or may not have a government. Now, the incentives for governments and a free society are completely different, as a state acts according to political interest and the agenda of its leadership, whereas a stateless society organizes itself through spontaneous order and will only act with the active consent of its participants. People will only give any hypothetical border control agency in a stateless society money because they want them to. Therefore, the border control agency needs to provide a product or service that people want to buy. This is not the case for a government, which will collect money through taxes, whether or not it works in the taxpayer's interest. Now the next question is, why do governments have borders? Governments are a monopoly on arbitration, where in a geographic location, they maintain the sole exclusive right to decide right and wrong and have those rulings enforced. As no government has yet acquired a global monopoly, not for lack of trying, mind you, they are limited to the geographic boundaries of where their jurisdiction ends and another begins. A government wants to gain control of these borders to expand their territory, allow tax cattle inside, or, in more recent examples, keep tax cattle from leaving, control what people from what cultures enter their society, what incompatible or otherwise hostile cultures might cause economic downturns, which diminishes tax revenues. None of these are arguments, per se, on what the state should do about borders, so let's just go ahead and get into it. Firstly, how should border policy function for libertarians? It needs to be ethical, for one. For the time being, we will ignore the lack of ethical justification for the government's mere existence, so we can focus on forming an ethical border policy. So my next question is, what are ethics? Ethics are what happens when you apply the first principles of logic, namely the consistency principle and the principle of non-contradiction, to interpersonal relationships, otherwise known as deontological ethics. I did a video explaining this step by step if you want more details, but anyways, the really important part is self-ownership. Every individual owns themselves, because if they didn't, then anyone would be justified in doing anything they like to you. If this were true, then rape couldn't possibly exist. From self-ownership, we derive that people can acquire property and ownership of that property through their labor. They can utter syllables and form relationships with whomever they wish. The latter is freedom of association. People may choose to associate or to not associate with anyone. Similarly, people have the freedom to move about, provided their movement does not infringe on the property of another. Denying the right to freedom of association denies the right to property, speech, and other natural rights derived from self-ownership. This denial is a claim that you don't own yourself. If that's the case, then who owns you? To whom are you a slave? As self-ownership is the cornerstone of libertarian belief, we can conclude that a libertarian border policy must 
protect freedom of association, and allow for free movement without infringing on property rights. So there appear to be four possible configurations on borders. Closed borders for states. Open borders for states. Closed borders for stateless societies. And open borders for stateless societies. I'll just come and say it right out, even when I'm being generous and not considering the unethical nature of the state, statist borders are, under most circumstances, still extremely unethical. From a simple freedom of association analysis, closed borders represent an impediment to people being unable to associate with whomever they wish. A U.S. employer may very well want a Guatemalan worker, for example, but they need to wait at least a year for their paperwork to process, even assuming they can get on the right side of an immigration quota. The problem is even worse if you try to come in illegally, as the government will directly prevent you from association through immediate deportation procedures. You don't honestly think people have freedom of association if association requires you to wait at least a year or even up to a decade all the while paying the following fees. SEVIS fee, $200. F1 visa application, $160. I-130 petition fee, $420. I-485 fee in biometrics, $1,140. I-751 fee in biometrics, $590. N-400 fee for the application for naturalization to become an American citizen, $680. Lawyer fee, $600. Now what the hell are half of these things? I don't know. But if there's a $3,790 price tag between your and your freedom of association, you don't have freedom of association. During the months or even years all this is processing, you're still required to pay federal, state, and local taxes. According to the logic of government's closed borders, you don't have freedom of association. That's just an example of how the U.S., with its bureaucratized immigration system, restricts people from exercising self-ownership. But the same principle applies to a completely closed border. Now, you might think that if the state just opened its borders, it would fix these ethical issues, which makes sense, doesn't it? Closed borders prevents free association, so open borders must mean free association, right? Well, the answer might surprise you, so check this out. I'm sorry if I'm constantly using the U.S. as an example, but it's what I know best, so bear with me. Most of these examples are relevant to the entire industrialized world, too, and ethics are universal. The U.S. government controls much of the U.S.'s transportation infrastructure, roads, highways, and even public transportation such as New York City's subways or the L in Chicago are all under the aegis of government control and can be used by anyone. People can participate in society and local cultures who otherwise wouldn't be wanted. In a system of private property, people could only enter a neighborhood if someone wanted them there. Now, that's not to say that nobody would ever want anyone who uses government roads. That's ridiculous. But government transportation infrastructure enables forced association through immigration. This isn't even getting into things like the welfare state. Now, to be fair, it is ridiculous to argue that we can't have immigration because immigrants might use a welfare state. As Esoteric Entity pointed out, it follows the same train of logic as we need gun control because criminals might kill people with guns. We can't make logical statements based on what someone might do. However, it's not clear if immigrants are even coming because of welfare. For one thing, in the U.S., they don't even qualify for most forms of welfare, such as Medicaid, direct welfare payments, or food stamps. Assuming that the welfare hypothesis is true, then it's another form of government-sponsored forced association, bringing in people who aren't wanted into societies they probably couldn't even make a living in otherwise. Now, how do I know that they aren't wanted? Because if people wanted them there, the welfare state and government control of infrastructure wouldn't be necessary for them to come in. So to break it down in layman's terms, government closed borders prevent freedom of association, while government open borders mandates forced association. All of it is rejection of the self-ownership of the individual and is therefore completely illegitimate. Now there is a way 
for the state to hypothetically have a border system that's completely ethical. And if you've been paying attention, you can probably already guess what it is. The reason that government borders create force association is two things. Government control of infrastructure and the welfare state. Therefore, if you get rid of those two things and make the entirety of the nation completely privately owned, with zero government incentives for immigration, then you could, in theory, have a completely ethical border policy within a state. However, this would require a government to not have a say or control over transportation. Whether or not it could enforce laws, such as taxes, will be entirely up to the owners of the roads, whether or not law enforcement or even military vehicles could travel on them. What will inevitably happen is that the simplest form of anti-government action will be to pay for road companies that don't allow government vehicles and thus starving the government of their resources as they are unable to collect taxes. This will force the government to either dissolve or become aggressive and seize the roads, in which case the borders will cease to become ethical, won't they? In addition, Abolishing the welfare state eliminates one of the state's most effective tools in pacifying a population, making them dependent on the state for their subsistence, that they literally can't afford to overthrow a tyrannical regime. Alternatively, it can be a useful tool in democracies for aspiring priests of statism to bribe voters. So can a state have an ethical border policy? Only if they operate without control over the borders, transportation infrastructure, or lack a welfare state. Though I should clarify the state is always unethical, and can never not be, but it isn't impossible for their border policy to be ethical. Now what about without a priesthood of statism? Should a voluntary society have open borders or closed borders? The needs and preferences of a voluntary society are too complex and dynamic for me to possibly judge what supply and demand for immigrants might look like. If I could, then that's an argument for me being able to see into the future. While I can make some guesses, I wanted to talk just about ethics of border policy. Namely, what would it look like? As per my example of government not controlling any transportation infrastructure, a voluntary, stateless society will have every square inch of the nation privately owned under the dominion of the owner. As property owners, they're free to exclude people from their property for whatever reason they wish. Immigrants can only enter if someone wants them to enter. There can be any number of reasons for this. Demand for new labor, tourism, education. Use your imagination. The important part is that people are freely associating and who enters and how many will be governed by the laws of supply and demand. Now just to be clear, this same principle also applies to voluntarist communist common property who will almost certainly only allow people to enter the commune if their society wants them there. This is legitimate and ethical. Thus, a completely ethical border system is property borders, where people associate because they want to. Government border policy is not a result of market demand, but the arbitrary whims of government clergy pursuing personal agendas. Whether Trump should build a wall or we should have complete and open borders accepts the premise of government jurisdiction. If libertarians earnestly believe in self-ownership and that property rights, free speech, and the right to association are natural rights, then it makes no sense for us to argue for government control over the border under any circumstance. As long as the government controls the borders, it doesn't matter. You can try to argue for closing borders from a position of pragmatism, but the principle remains the same. What we need is market borders, not government borders. And the only reason we have problems with immigration today, such as the migrant-populated no-go zones in Europe, it's because of the state's regime of forced association. Pragmatism is never going to avoid this problem. It only offers band-aid solutions for a broken bone problem. To put a long story short, the best form for borders is private ownership of the nation's borders. Government sucks at borders. Deal with it. Questions? Comments? Critique? What do you think about government border policy? Is it too late for Trump to build his border wall? Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon and subscribe to my livestream channel. Like 
share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.